Welcome in Valley baseball fans for a special edition of the first pitch. It's a postseason edition and Indiana State is hosting an NCAA regional. Terre Haute is going to be bonkers this weekend alongside with D1Baseball.com's Joe Healy. And first of all, Joe, it's, it kind of my, is mind blowing after all those good Indiana State teams over the years and named after Bob Warren, the legendary coach himself. It's kind of funny that this weekend he'll be in attendance watching his Indiana State Sycamores and one of his protégés, Mitch Hannes, guide the Sycamores in the postseason. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's got to, I can only imagine what it must be like to step into a stadium named after you. That's uh, probably something I will never experience. But uh, yeah, a cool moment for the program. Uh, you can't say enough about how important hosting these regionals are. And yes, you want to win them. That's the point. But just hosting them is such a, a great achievement. It, it puts you on a, on a separate level, a separate pedestal, if you will. It, it kind of announces your program as a national player on the national stage. And it's, it's great for the community. Let, let's face it, it's also a time of year when the students are gone, you know, that the town's a little quieter. So it brings a little livelihood, liveliness back to back to the, the university area. That That's a big deal. And uh, they got a tough draw. We'll talk about that. But it's going to be a fun weekend in Terre Haute. I hope Indiana State fans really show out and pack the stadium and make it a great atmosphere. And Mitch Hannes will downplay it. He always does. He's really <clears throat> reserved and soft-spoken when it comes to handing out flowers uh, before it's time. But uh, I think it's certainly time for Mitch Hannes to take a bow and certainly the, the folks at Indiana State that they have kind of taken the torch uh, in the Missouri Valley Conference. Now that Creighton is no longer there, Wichita State's no longer there, DBU for that matter, no longer there. Uh, they've hosted in the past. So maybe this is something Indiana State can sustain. I think that's absolutely right. They've done a fabulous job of building up this program to what it is to where now it's it's respected as, look, you know, no matter who leaves the program, goes on to pro ball, goes on to, to whatever they're going to do in their post-baseball life, Indiana State's going to be fine the next year that the team is going to be good. And, and look, they may not make a regional. Nobody, hardly anybody makes a regional every year. Um, but more often than not, they're going to be right there in the end. And, you know, you look at the way this year played out in the Valley and you had Indiana State and you had Missouri State that fell off a little bit towards the end of the year. But I do think there it was a little bit poetic that as some of these teams have left the Valley, it comes back to Indiana State, which is the most consistent program in the league right now, and Missouri State, which is the one that, based on everybody who's left, it now has the most history of winning in, in the baseball postseason. So it is a little bit of a shift from years past, but I think it is good for the league and good for the Valley that you you have those two teams you know, showing out the way they did, and, and now Indiana State playing at home. Looking at Indiana State on the micro now, on the field, uh, to me, their starting rotation is really second to none. Maybe Iowa's can rival theirs. But between Matt Jasek, Connor uh, Fenlong, and Lane Miller, those three guys, and and for that matter, Joe, uh, they had their number four guy, uh, Brennan Cutts, pitched very well in the Missouri Valley Conference. So on the micro, when you have a starting rotation that looks like that, to me, that screams, we're built for a regional turn. Teams from mid-major leagues who host, typically where they trip up is that they might have a guy, you know, one guy, their Friday guy, who they trust to beat anybody in the regional. But then beyond that, it starts to get a little bit shallow and, and they run out of pitching. And that's typically how these types of clubs lose in regionals. Indiana State's not going to have that problem. You know, you mentioned the guys they have, and, and Iowa might have a more talented rotation, almost certainly has a more talented rotation, but I'm not sure it's better. I would go with Indiana State just based on those guys get you deep into games, and you hardly ever see that anymore at the college level uh, or any level, really, at this point. Teams go to the bullpen so quickly, but they're, they have workhorses, old-school workhorses. They, they You mentioned cuts. They run four deep with guys they trust. They've also got some bullpen depth. You know, there, there are a lot of reasons Indiana State might not win this regional, not the least of which is they've got three other good teams in the regional, but I really seriously doubt it's going to be because they run out of pitching you guys at d1baseball.com multiple guys down there i read uh in the last day or so are really excited about this uh, first matchup with Wright state as far as the pitching is concerned speak to that a little bit and what can we expect from uh Wright state they're a 39 win team they're really really good and, and what part of what makes them dangerous in a regional is they're they're not just happy to be there like they want to they want to win games <laughs> and they typically do you know they were the regional I covered last year was in Blacksburg Virginia Wright State was the four seed there and they gave Virginia Tech all they wanted in that first game and then they won another game they beat Gonzaga to, to move on in the regional they're not just going to show up and expect to hey it's cool if we go 0 and 2 like no that they expect to win Indiana State's probably going to see Sebastian Gongora on the mound he was the Horizon League pitcher of the year numbers are really really good athletic guy on the mound 
Um, he's going to be a, a tough out. The other thing about Wright State is that they they want to make things happen offensively. They do have some guys who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Andrew Patrick has 19 home runs for them, but they have 108 stolen bases as a team. Um, you know, Grant McGill behind the plate is going to be a big key for Indiana State in that matchup to try to slow it, plus the pitchers holding runners to try to slow down that running game a little bit because once that they start going, it is kind of hard to slow down that offense. And, you know, one of their name to know is Jay Lucart with Wright State. He's a two-way guy. He's a he's a closer. He's also one of their better bats hitting 304 on the year with 11 home runs. But the big picture with Wright State is that they're going to fight you. They're going to expect to win. And, and teams like that are extremely dangerous in a regional. That's really interesting you bring that up because McGill was a Valley defensive player, uh, defensive player of the year and throws out nearly half of the base runners trying to steal against him. Interesting homecoming for Rick <laughs> Keller, of course, taking the number two Iowa team uh, he was the former Valley Coach of the Year in his brief time at Indiana State. He brings in uh, the Hawkeyes with 42 wins. They actually beat Indiana State on opening day. I'm not sure how much you can take from game one to game 60 or wherever <laughs> we're at right now. But they also beat LSU along the way. So if you don't keep track of the Big Ten, I was no joke. No doubt. One of the quietest 40-plus win seasons I can remember. It felt like they did it just in, in secret, almost. <laughs> uh, Iowa did. Really talented club and, and impressive in what they're doing for a couple of reasons. One is that, yes, it's a Big Ten club, but in terms of some of the resources they have, they're not in much better shape facilities wise than a lot of the Valley. It, you know, that they play at a, at a field that, you know, frankly, is in, in need of, of updating. And that those are on the way, supposedly, and, and they deserve it because of the winning they've done there. Rick Heller has taken what was a largely also ran program in the Big Ten and turned them into one of the more consistent programs in the Big Ten, and this year is, is the best team that he's had in, in a long time and, and perhaps ever. It's also impressive because they've been without their best hitter, Keaton Anthony, now for several weeks. Uh, you may remember that the news story, there was an investigation ongoing at the University of Iowa related to, you know, gambling-related things. Though it's never been confirmed he's involved, he has not been on the field since that news story broke. And yet they continue to kind of keep rolling, honestly. Um, but the more interesting piece for them is on the mound. Now, Indiana State probably catches a break by not seeing Brody Brecht, who is a big-time prospect, throws 100 miles an hour. They're, they're not going to see him, so that's a little bit of a break, but that doesn't necessarily make it easier. They have two other starters in Marcus Morgan and Ty Langenberg, who are going to be pros. They're not the prospects in the level of Brody Brecht, but what I will say is that as good as Brecht's stuff is, he tends to be pretty inefficient. You can knock him out after you know, four innings because his pitch count is, is higher than it needs to be. Morgan and Langenberg tend to be better pitchers. So pick your poison, right? So Iowa really, really talented on the mound. Offensively, again, 98 stolen bases. So that that cat and mouse game between the defense and the runners is going to be big against Iowa. And, you know, can Indiana State take advantage of the fact that it's expected they will still be without Keaton Anthony, one of their biggest hitters in the lineup. Tell us about North Carolina. They're the three seed. Their RPI of 27. What can we expect from the Diamond Heel? Yeah, they're really dangerous because it feels like they've underachieved their talent a little bit this year, which of course means that they could just flip a switch. You know, it wouldn't be a shock to see them win this regional. It frankly wouldn't be a shock to see them come out and, and we look at them and say, oh, this is actually clearly the best team in this regional this weekend because they're they're that talented. Vance Honeycutt is the, the best position player on the team. He's actually had a little bit of a down year. Alberto Osuna is their best power bat. He's also had a little bit of a down year, but what has kept the UNC offense afloat is the emergence of some newcomers like Casey Cook, who redshirted for them last year, Jackson Vandebrake, a junior college transfer. Those guys have kind of helped make up for the fact that you have a couple of, of big boppers who have had down years by their standard. The rotation is Jake Knapp, Connor Beauvert, Max Carlson, all really talented guys, none of whom though have been real standouts necessarily. They all have ERAs hovering around five or above five. Frankly, the way UNC wants to play is less predicated on their starting pitchers and more predicated on how they set up their bullpen. They're not afraid to go to the bullpen early. They're not afraid to use seven pitchers. A note to Indiana State fans, if you get into a game with UNC and they start switching pitchers, get comfortable because <laughs> it ends up it ends up playing slow a little bit uh, because they're, they're going to cycle through a lot of guys, but that's kind of how they want to play. That's just kind of their style. They've been known for that for as, as long as I can remember. So I'm not sure what to expect from them because they have underachieved their talent a little bit, but on the other hand, they are really, really talented. It could really go either way this weekend. Should be Bedlam at the Bob at Terre Haute, Indiana State hosting for the first time. Should be a great weekend. Happy uh, NCAA tournament to all of you out there. And thanks to Joe Healy and Ryan Davis at the Valley and everybody involved that's watched our visits uh, regarding Missouri Valley Conference baseball on the first pitch all season long. Hope everybody has a good summer and enjoy the regionals and beyond.